Greetings historians, welcome to Lore of the Dragon. Today's video will be somewhat different than the normal videos, as I won't really be going into speculation at the end of the video, but rather be focusing on the lore itself, as I believe speculation of this topic might as well lead to a video covering an entire game. What we'll be talking about today is actually the place where all the adventures started, and the place I was talking about recently on the channel, the Dragon Realms and the Dragon Kingdom. Today's video will be on both of these up to the point of Spyro 1, and describe on how they came to be. Keep in mind that some of the information in this video may not be canon, and since we are going with the continuity of a Reignited Trilogy, as well as the original era, I'm going to put a message in the bottom right letting you know if what I'm saying is in the Reignited Trilogy or is in the original timeline. To understand the Home of the Dragons, there is some context that you might need, which brings us to the possibility of the original land of the dragons, the Forgotten Realms. A millennium before Spyro, the dragons lived in a land halfway around the world. At the time, the Forgotten Realms were inhabited by the dragons, a powerful race that used magic to fuel their technology, and from what can be gathered, they were the governing race alongside another creature known as the Sorceress. Portals were established around the Forgotten Realm, allowing easy travel within its many territories. Tensions rose, however, between the dragons and the sorceress, and one day, the dragons, via magic, were banished from their homes, and sent to the other side of the planet, left to live in an unknown land. This is the point where things start to get a little strange lore-wise. While both the originals and Reignited acknowledge that the dragons were transported as a result of the banishment, other accounts seem to have a different interpretation of how and why they actually went to the Dragon Realms. In Shadow Legacy, there is a legend of a great sea dragon that found what would later be called Dragon Shores. At first, I thought that this would come in the conflict with already established lore, and it can, but this could be taken in another way. There are a few ways to look at this. You can take the idea that the dragons were transported to Dragon Shores, which is possible, but this doesn't explain why the legend exists. Another possibility is that while some dragons stayed behind in the Forgotten Realms, others saw the hostilities between the dragons and the sorceress and fled before the banishment, with their eyes set on the farthest place from the two groups. Thus, the legend of the great sea dragon was made. This brings us to years after the dragon's exile, which is, well, not exactly covered in the lore. However, theories actually might bring us to the land of Avalar, and might explain a few things about Spyro 2. While I was talking to Canadian Guy A over Discord, we talked about how exactly the Professor might have even learned about the dragon's existence, or even got the coordinates to the dragon realms. First, we're going to go into Canadian Guy A's theory, talking about what he thinks could be the reasoning behind this. There's many different possibilities. Someone in an ancient time could have done some world hopping and made books based on different places they visited. Someone from the Forgotten Realms went to Avalar to write about the dragons, when they were there. A dragon could have accidentally visited Avalar a long time ago and helped a researcher discover them. The main factor is that a book with the coordinates to the dragon realms was made, likely not by the professor as he was fiddling with the super portal to begin with. There's an even deeper theory here, you know. If there's a book about dragons, it has coordinates already about where they are, but the professor just built a super portal with modern technology, then that leads the assumption the orbs are from an ancient technologically advanced civilization that used them to power portals. The second theory comes from yours truly, which involves the great sea dragon. During this supposed period that the sea dragon was leaving the Forgotten Realms, it can be assumed there might have been others that wanted to flee to the farthest point from their old home to the other side of the world. The idea was during this mass exodus, dragons ran into what would be Avalar during the time, and left the knowledge of their destination, existence, and some of their portal technology in Avalar, letting those living in Avalar, and eventually the Professor, to know where to actually send the coordinates for the super portal, and granting him what is needed to actually make the super portal in the first place. It wouldn't be long until the dragons started to settle in their new home, finding that the future dragon realms were filled with creatures like that of their old home, the most notable ones being the Norks and the Dragonflies. According to a book called The Legends of Dragonkind, 
The first settlement would soon be called Dragon Village, which was built using magic and their knowledge of architecture. Soon after, a group of dragons convened, bringing forth the dragon's governing body, the Council of Elders. Now the council, from what can be gathered, existed for millenniums before the dragon's exodus. So it can be assumed that after the dragons had been banished from the Forgotten Realms, eventually that would become the Dragon Kingdom, the territory that the dragons now called home. At an unknown time, a new area of the Dragon Kingdom would be formed, this being what we know as the Dragon Realms. This area consists of five main worlds, or rather six if you count the one called the Dragon Junkyard. Each of the five main specialized in certain skill, be that masonry and art like the Dragons of Artisans, protecting the borders like the Peacekeepers, the Beastmakers, creators of magical items like the Magic Crafters, and the Guardians of the Dragon's Dreams, the Dreamweavers. The sixth area, like was mentioned earlier, is called the Dragon Junkyard, which after the trouble arose in the Dragon Realms caused by a Nork called Nasty, became the home for him after the dragons had banished him there. Like was said earlier, this expansion would bring the dragons into contact with the species that already populated the land, with the dragonflies actually forming a symbiotic relationship with their dragon partners. While the Norks seem to, from what can be assumed by Nasty and a few other Norks, their reception to the dragons was a little mixed. For the time being, peace now reigned upon the dragons' new home and the new generations grew up in a land seem to forget the turmoil of how their species found this land in the first place. Anyway, that's going to be for me. If you want a part 2 of this covering everything after Spyro 1, or you'd rather a Legends Dragon Realm video, let me know down in the comments. So, that's going to be for me. I hope to see you all in the next lore video. Stay safe, historians.